I think there's a little bit of irony to it in a way. And I think about this a lot is I do wonder if like people with a certain personality type are more likely to get gadolinium. And I'm not saying that in a victim shaming way. I am saying who is more likely to go in and care about their health and to try to take active steps to either prevent things or know everything they need to know, get full transparency on their body. At least that's what they think they're doing. It's like we went in and did it because we were thought we were being responsible. Right. And so it's like maybe some of those friends who did drugs have a personality type where if it came to an appointment, they'd just be like, eh, I don't want it anyway. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that's 100% the case, but after getting gadolinium, mm -hmm. I've almost adopted that mindset myself now where I'm like, unless it's essential, I'm not doing it. Unless it's essential, I'm not doing it. Whereas before, I, I would have been more open mm -hmm. to going in and, you know, taking an antibiotic if someone said I needed it. You or, open <laughs> or, oh, you say I need a chest x-ray? Sure, let's do a chest x-ray. Yeah. Um, so I'm not saying that the personality thing is true but i think it broke down my personality it took my maybe type a very following structure personality and now i'm just like like if there's something wrong with me i'm going to the deep dark parts of the web to figure out the cure for it hey there two big announcements our merch shop bondswithoutbounds.com slash shop is now open so there's a lot of cool merch on there if you are interested in purchasing and supporting the channel the other thing is Gadolinium64 is a website that'll be a landing page for all Gadolinium resources, so feel free to check it out when it is up if you ever want to look around and see what things you can find. Also, if you want to subscribe and like this video, I'll keep making more content. If not, I'll stop. I'm just kidding. I probably won't stop, but maybe I would. Maybe I eventually would. So like it to show some support, and I hope you enjoy the interview. <laughs> not what I'm gonna get handed when I walk into a doctor because I know that's not gonna fix it yeah you know? no um I agree I also think it's based on insurance too I think that oh a lot yeah of people, oh. like good insurances who can cover shit like because MRIs are expensive right it's a multi-billion dollar business MRIs yeah contract things like that diagnostic imaging in general but especially mris because they're they're more popular than x-rays at this point yeah um so yeah i definitely think it's insurances because people who don't have like good insurance they're not able to get an mri they can't pay for an mri you know yeah so, and like, so like in a weird twist of irony they might have less toxic things in their body that they won't, I mean, they won't have gadolinium. I'll say that <laughs> <laughs> they won't have gadolinium. Well, I'm just thinking of other scans where they fill you up with all kinds of stuff. Which I mean, we don't need to get into that space because we don't need to get blacklisted. Obviously, I would have taken anything before I would have taken gadolinium, yeah. but still, I mean, a lot of the scans, it's like here, drink this heavy metal. Right now, they virtually all come in contrast now, like. I had a cousin who just told me the other day that she received contrast for like an eye exam or something. They like injected her with this thing called fluorescein. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Oh, well. I've never heard of that in my life, but it has fluoride, just like fluoroquinolones fluoro do. Oh my gosh. So you can develop a toxicity to it that is quite serious. Oh my like gosh. Seizures, brain injuries, nerve damage. And they're injecting it straight into your eyeball. It's like that's kind no, of not a... into your eyeball, into your arm. But, but like, like it goes through your eyeball, right? Yeah. Because it goes and to your bloodstream. Like, and then you pee, um, like you pee bright highlighter yellow. Hmm. Doesn't that sound great? <laughs> Every time I go to the bathroom, I'm like, you know what would make this experience better? <laughs> you, looks like a highlighter. <laughs> oh, my God. No, uh, I don't even have really much to say about that other than I agree with you. It's, I mean, okay, here's the thing. If you and I had issues that warranted it, then... I feel like it'd be a different conversation, but I just don't think most things warrant this kind of behavior of injecting things. And then another thing that's interesting is like, they're not taking into account the fact that there may be things in your body 
or inflammation in your body that can already interact with what they're putting into it. So it's like, right. like, okay, we have gadolinium in us. So I, for example, got something in my eye this summer and they had to rinse it out with a flush. And fortunately the flush was fine, but they did have to use um, povidone. I think it was povidone iodine, some form of iodine to actually see the shards of what was in my eye. Sorry, this is kind of like a long explanation, but iodine interacts with gadolinium. And so I actually did end up having blurrier vision for a few weeks after they rinsed my eyeball out. Um, Cause I think it, you know, did something maybe freed a little bit of gad in my eye. Um, yeah. I needed it cause there were shards of sulfur in my eye. So there was no other option, which that's a circumstance in which it's like, okay, do it because we have to get this out of my eye. But um, th- things can interact with each other. So so iodine interacts with gadolinium and, you know, okay. it's just weird. It's just weird. Um, okay, so this is what I'm thinking with the interview. I feel like there's so many more topics we could touch upon, but I don't want to mm-hmm. exhaust you to the point that you are sad talking to me and then you don't, like... No, I'm not sad. I'm okay. honestly, like, this is, I, I'm keeping my spirits up right now. <laughs> okay, okay. I feel like, I feel like your spirit is kind of up, so I'm, oh, like, trying to keep it okay. up to you. <laughs> oh, I, I, wanna, I do want to hit the points where it's just, like, it is serious, like, okay. I want to, like, but I feel like we, we, we've done that, like, we kind of balanced it out, where it's okay. just, like, you know, but, um, no, I'm, like, I, I'm, to- I'm totally fine right now, like, okay, I, I'm cool. Okay, okay, cool. Thank okay, you for good. checking in. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's but like I've, I'm... yeah, I've heard a phenomenon that people have talked about where it's like sometimes if people are sh- showing exhaustion with something, it's better to like end before you exhaust them, so that way you end on a high note. And like, I just I know with gadolinium, mm-hmm. it can be really difficult to talk about, and like, I don't ever want to discourage anybody from talking about it. Like some of my other interviews I've done for like two or three hours and then I'm like oh my god that person's probably never gonna want to talk to me again because they're just gonna associate me with like the sadness <laughs> oh my like, god you know what I'm talking about I mean it is hard because it's like like think about it right now as we're talking about this like I feel like we're doing a really good job but it's also super freaking depressing it is like it's it like is. I think they're... somebody commented on my tiktok recently and was like this is just depressing and I'm like well yes <laughs> Yes, that is my thank you for validating like a lot of the comments people have about it it's like like point proven thank you you're saying exactly what my point is so yeah 